So the second compound event that we're going to talk about is what's called an AND probability. All right. So and, and again, we, we've got another definition here. This is kind of the AND equivalent of um, the mutually exclusive that we talked about before. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one doesn't affect the probability of the other. All right. So look, look at this solution here uh, and my examples. Selecting winning raffle tickets where a person can't win twice. OK, well, let's say there's 100 raffle tickets. The probability of getting the winning one, there's one winning ticket for the first draw, so it's one out of 100. OK, so they, this person wins, and they can't win twice. So that ticket kind of gets set aside. OK, now there are only 99 tickets left. So the probability of winning that second place is slightly higher than the first place result. So the the first result did impact the probability of the second one. So these events would be dependent. Right? How about how about flipping a coin or rolling a die? Well the the coin result doesn't somehow magically affect the die result. They're they're completely separate. One doesn't impact the other. So those would be exam an example of independent events. Now, cards are always a little tricky, right? Usually when you're answering a question that involves cards, it's going to be specific. It'll either say the cards are drawn with replacement. In, in, in other words, a card, is, a card is taken out and then it's put back. Or, or it's done without replacement. The card is taken out and not put back, right? If the card is put back, then the events are independent because there's always the same 52 cards in the deck every time. If the card is not put back, which is how I usually interpret dealt, because when you're being dealt a hand of cards, you're, you're dealt the first one, the second one, and the third one, the cards aren't put back. So in the case where the card isn't put back, then the events are dependent, because once you start taking cards out, the total number of cards goes down and the probabilities change. Okay, so, so here's our formula for dealing with an and probability. Okay, and... What I want you to notice here, we, we have this qualifier up front, and it's really important. This formula only works if the events are independent. If they're dependent, we're going to have to tweak this a little bit. We're going to talk about that in a later lecture. All right, so if the events are independent, then all I have to do is multiply their individual probabilities together, hence the multiplication rule, right? and we'll get our, our final result. Now, so at this point, we have two formulas, right? We have our multiplication formula and our addition formula, one for and probabilities, one for or probabilities. So anytime we have a situation where, where we have two formulas, students always start to really, really start to try to focus in on when do I use one versus the other, right? And here, here's the key thing we're talking about, right? With an and probability, two things happen. We flip a coin and we select a card. We, we deal the first card, and then we deal a second card. There are always two distinct events taking place. An or probability is one event with more than one outcome. Right? Remember in, in the previous lectures, we, we talked about the probability of being dealt an ace or a red card. For example, you're only getting one card, but there there are two different outcomes, two different res results that we would consider a success, right? So that's a key thing you're going to look for when we're trying to answer this kind of question. All right, so how about how about an example here? Find the probability of rolling a six on a die and selecting a queen from a deck of cards. Well, these events are independent, right? The one doesn't affect the other, so to find the probability, I'm going to find the probability of getting a 6 times the probability of getting a queen. Okay, the probability of getting a 6, there's only one 6 out of the, out of the 6 side, so this is going to be one 6. The probability of getting a queen, there are 4 queens out of 52 cards. And there, that's all there is, right? Multiply these together. You get 0 0.013, a little more than 1% of the time, right? Not very likely to happen. So, um, 
probability of rolling 12 on two dice. Okay, that maybe doesn't just jump out at you as an and probability or an or, right? Neither of those words appear in there. So what can we do? Well, look, sometimes you have to kind of rephrase things. There's only one way to get 12 on two dice. You have to get a six and a six, right? And you notice what I just said there, six and a six. So this really is an and probability. If we think of this uh, as probability of getting a six on the first die and six on the second. And they're, 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 the individual die rolls are independent. You, see, you, you keep them separate. They don't bump into anything, any crazy like that. Um, so all I have to do is take the individual probabilities, one-sixth for the first result and one-sixth for the second, and multiply them together. And that's it. There's my final answer. Okay, so now we have, we have, the, we have or probabilities with the multiplication rule. Kind of a, a basic and probability with the multiplication rule. So what we're going to talk about uh, in the next lecture, we're not quite going to get to the to the to the, a dependent and yet. There's something else I want to talk about first. We're going to talk about um, calculating the probability for complementary events. We're going to see how that can be used to do what's called an at least probability.